You know, I heard about vetiver long ago through my daughter, Vanessa, who wrote a paper on it for the World Bank. And it's always fascinated me. And then I heard about projects in Trinidad and in St. Lucia. And so I applied to do a project in Grenada because I know how much it would help Grenada, both the land and the people providing employment opportunities and helping with erosion and all sorts of climate change issues. The grant was through the Jeff Small Grants program and I applied for that last year and I've been working on the project. I would say um, actually it's about nine months now because COVID set us back quite a bit. I founded a company called Eco Strategies Grenada Incorporated with um, a group of like-minded people who I knew would help me on the project. In particular, Albert and Ingutu Buckmeyer, who were very, very helpful, and some other people, some of them connected to the Ministry of Agriculture in Grenada, because I really wanted to involve the Ministry of Agriculture, because I think that's the way it's going to move forward in Grenada. VTV is not a new thing on this island. It was there long before, but um, somehow it just went away. And um, due to Miss Slinger, the people in the country now get into know about VTV due to the project. And I believe it will have a, a big impact because there's a lot of work here to do with VTV. We have a lot of slippage throughout the island. And there's a lot of other things that we just learn about VTV, which will do good for us as a people, you know. And um, so far, I believe it is a good initiative. We will see the government come on board, the different ministries, and um, we, we have um, a huge nursery. I believe it is a step in the right direction, you know, for Grenada. It will do us good, and the people are learning more about it. So. particular interest something they like to share. There's an opportunity to actually kind of be interviewed. So my name is Jonathan Barker. I'm with IM Movement, uh, Managing Director of IM Movement, but also representing Vetiver TT Ecological Engineering Solutions Limited, which is a green engineering company in Trinidad. And I'm also the representative for the Caribbean for the Vetiver Network International. And uh, this is a really interesting and exciting opportunity that uh, where Eco Strategies Grenada led by June and the Ocean Edge Farm. You know, we're really keen on trying to bring Vetiver to Grenada for quite some time. Uh, they really had a very wide range of participants, sort of a bit different from usual, where normally we might focus just on one community. But what was really interesting was to see that with the strong support of the, of the Ministry of Agriculture, and specifically the Permanent Secretary of Agriculture, they're able to invite a really, really wide range of people. So we saw that almost, you know, every day we were interacting with, you know, new groups of persons. Um, what the project really entailed, or I should say, you know, this sort of two-week intensive was really a series of workshops, but where we had to tailor and adapt to all of the different groups. And uh, that would be like workshops in the morning, that's like classroom workshops, but then following on in the afternoon with hands-on activities, you know, the preparation of the vetiver plants, learning how to do that, uh, as well as at the same time, we had a wonderful handicraft uh, man who's a real legend in Grenada. His name is King Coot, uh, Mr. Glasgow. So he was there every afternoon and persons can go and kind of take a break from the hands-on learning about the vetiver plants to go and learn how to do crafts and so on. It's a vetiver. It's very good for you, for culture, for livelihood, and for everything else, you know? So I stay into it up to today. I's in the 60s now. But it could, be, it could be a real good for Grenada because you have a market for it, and that is, that is essential. Once you have a market for it, then everybody will be able to be more interested into it. You know, once you get a market, it's just like we are with crops and we don't have a market for it, then a lot of people just lack a daisy car. But when you have a market for it, people will go more to the forefront for these things. So the vetiver, trust me, you would be, always be there for us, yeah. In this training, while I was particularly interested in the handicrafts, I found that the learning about how the plant lives and works was most interesting, that it can be used as hedges to prevent soil erosion, and, and even how it has been used as a business by companies in different islands, it's probably something that could be 
that businesses in Grenada can be encouraged to to do. You know, businesses are people, you know, for the preservation of their land and property. I saw it on Facebook, I saw a flyer, and I wrote to June, and she responded to me and sent a video of a project in another island, and I was like, wow, that's what they did? I could do that, you know, and I could probably make a lot of money from handicraft. Nice. So I told her, yes, I'm interested, and also interested for the members of my group. Our group is called Ashanti Footprints, and we do performing arts and also handicrafts. And I saw it as a way for the members of the group to make money to help themselves in life. I came here today for multiple reasons. I know I knew the grass, traditionally known to us like a nut grass and scented root. But I was curious to know more about the grass and see how I can like implement it in whatever because I have minor erosion. So actually that was the convincing part to, to come. I was sent some information so to know about the uses and whatnot. Interesting things like the grass is used for roofing and the oils and all those things like that. So I was curious to learn more and at the end of the, the, the session, see how I could, make, I could make use of the grass because I mean it's from what I gathered, it's so easy to grow and low cost to cultivate and everything like that. I come here as an agriculture extension officer um, to see what the heuristics of the, the, the vetiver grass and what its potential are and help to inculcate some of the actual waste systems and assisting in land degradation. It can be beneficial to the in, in piggery systems like wastewater from the pig pens. Um, farmers in Grenada have been crippled by the controlling of wastewater system through the environmental health department or ministry. They they could be able to advise farmers to use that particular grass to control wastewater from pens, especially pig pens, and to control the level of wastewater leaving from there to the actual river or stream systems in Grenada. We did some vertebrae work on a piggery. The guy had his piggery close to the, the river, so we went there to um, plant some vetiver to clean up the, 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 the soil there. The piggery affluent is, it, it, it flows out of the pens, but it's located really close to a pristine river. So the farmer was you know, super engaged, and since he plans to expand his farm a lot and to have you know, on the scale of thousands of pigs is what his vision is for the future. You know, we really think that the vetiver there, which he fully got, can serve as a really powerful barrier to prevent the flow of contaminants and nutrients into that beautiful river. Presently, we are at the Maribo Propagating Station, and this is one of the main propagation stations for the, the Ministry of Agriculture. This is where all the plants are propagated for distribution to the farmers. So here today, um, the session here was basically to bring that sort of a knowledge and information to the, the workers and the staff on this station um, so that they in themselves could practice and extend it also to the um, wider public. Um, a bit of propagation will be taken um, carried out here also. Additionally, we did some um, planting, a sort of a small demonstration. Um, on the side here we have a, a greenhouse that was established for propagation and through the, the um, excavation and so the excavation have left some bare soils which have been sliding and slipping and there was some effort to stabilize it which um, created a bit of challenge. So the vetiver now would be um, established there to sort of uh, continue with the protection effort and make things a bit more stable. Well, this workshop, to me, it's, it's a real confirmation as to how far we can really go with the vetiver. People don't really look at 
I mean, people are aware that we have the vetiver, we, we plant it and hedge and so, but going in depth as to, you know, the real science behind it and even the byproducts, what it could do and so on. As I told you, within the, the incentive project that we had for the watershed management, that was one of the things that we was looking at. How, how can we incentivize farmers to um, conserve, to plant trees and crops and so that would help conserve the soil. And um, one of the things that we was looking at, if we tell them to plant vetiver grass, what else can they do with the vetiver grass that could bring some kind of an enhancement to them? So that led me to sort of a research and see what else you know we could come up with. My name is Christopher Strode. I'm the social worker here at Her Majesty's Prisons Grenada. And I'm also the project manager on this um, project here, the Grey Water Project, which has been sponsored by Jeff Small Grants Program. Because what we found is that um, during the dry season, we had problem because we do a lot, lot of agriculture here. And during the dry season, irrigation is a problem. So we um, wrote up this project proposal and we were able to get the funds to do this dam. What we wanted to do was to stabilize the side of the dam. Okay. And that's where the vetiver came in. And this will really, really help in, in the pond. Mm -hmm. The other thing I like about it in terms of the workshop, what I learned is in terms of getting rid of toxin in the water. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we're going to, uh, to do. Yeah. Meet with June in terms of how do we make the pontoons to put there so that we could have the vetiver in the water to be able to clean it up. If it prevents landslides, it prevents landslides? One of the things that we do here in terms of rehabilitation work mm -hmm. is giving the men skills. Because coming out of prison, you have the stigmatization and all those things. So what we want to give men uh, the, the, the skill to be able to work independently. Yeah. And therefore, if they have the skills, the craft skills, then when they go out, they don't want to work for anybody. They could do their craft and get the craft sold. Mm -hmm. And that's an economic base for them. Yeah. You know? And apart from that, actually working with the craft, in terms of what it does mentally and relaxing and as a therapy. And I did the wood and I find the wood hard. I sit down, I leave it out and I think how to do it. There got to be a way to make get it easier. Yeah. So you sit back and you think and then you go back to it again. Yeah. When you go back then you're taking your time and you get in. And when you take your time, you get in it. Exactly In my constituency, we do have the water's edge <laughs> and uh, from one end to the other. And so we're bordered by the sea and that is a challenge. Um, the erosion is widespread from one end to the other. And of course, if you're thinking about the, um, the hard approach meaning if you're going to build the walls and you're going to build um, systems that is going to protect, you're talking millions and millions of dollars. And so government has been challenged in terms of coming up with a solution um, to this problem. And um, it's almost unbelievable sometimes, you know, the short space of time um, and the amount of erosion that takes place. And so in some cases, um, even worse than the area that we focus in now, which is Subis, where people's homes are almost in the sea. And so whatever can be done, whatever means can be used to halt or to reduce um, this erosion, I think it's so very critical and this project offers some hope. And so when I was introduced to this initiative, I thought it was an excellent one. It was also very educational for me as well. And so I give this my full support because I do see possibilities and potentials coming out of that. I would say the fact that you've engaged students, it's really going to increase the level of hope that we have of sustainability for this project. And um, children are good educators when it comes to their parents and people at home. So the message would eventually get to their parents and other family members. Come around, look me.
if the last side happening here, that's the weak point, and this is the grass, the root growing past the weak point. My name is Johnny yes. George. Um, from today's session, yeah, when you finish, I learned a lot. And I mean a lot, I mean a lot. I learned that the slips, the the, the vetiver, that the the roots could go up to ten feet, and they use the root to make perfume. Uh, they use the summer this to make handcraft. They use this to make handcraft. Yeah. And the, it is very good for the soil because it's preventing the um, from landslide because the root, the root is like is like a suction. You stick to the, the soil, you stabilize it. So it is very good. It's very good to have a vetiver. We went to the Crochu RC school and we did a, a, a lovely little project there planting vetiver that the school children were extremely interested in and I think they will remember that and I intend to go back there with some educational material and put up a little display for them so that they'll have it and the teachers can point out the various aspects of vetiver to them so that it'll be a learning center for them and for anybody else who wants to take part in it.